about it is, it, as Rom alluded to, if you've never been to a film market, it's it, an eye opener. It's an eye opener because you realize, I mean, they refer to the movies as product, and it is product. It could be they're selling hamburgers or hot dogs, or I mean, it's just it's all on. I I got to say, that there is much less of it than there used to be. Yeah, because I think. On the smaller movies it is, on the bigger movies or the more, there is less of it. So, because I think the market has changed like 20 years ago, there was a video market. You can yep. make movies that were made just purely for the video and straight to DVD or whatever. That market has shrunk a lot. So today, the market is more like movies have to be theatrical. However, there's still a market for movies that never go theatrically, but I think it's smaller and smaller. Or there's still a lot of movies, they just either don't sell or they sell for very little money. But it, it's still good to go to you know, go see like 500 companies, each one has their own suite in the, in the hotel in Lowe's, and they all go and they make posters of the movies. Movies that got made, or movies that will get made, or movies that will never get made. Uh, but they are trying to sell and see how people selling the movies and they show trailers of the movies or they screen them uh, and it's, it's good. I really do think it's great education. And the thing that I think is empowering about what you've done and in a way kind of, <coughs> admittedly this is a different time, but Ted Hope and did this as well in the early days, him and uh, James Seamus, they became very close to those distributors, buyers that were abroad. Absolutely. So for instance, um, I don't know how many of you guys know this, but Hal Hartley, his, Hal Hartley had three or four movies that were literally financed totally from France. I mean, the French distributor put up... Sofia Coppola, she's big in France. So Sofia Coppola, another one. Even her movies, even the last few movies didn't do well, you can count on a big pre-sale from, uh, from France that helps said whatever, you know, it makes doing their movies, even though they don't feel like the most commercial yep. on paper, necessarily make them very doable and profitable. But for these guys, when they're starting out, it's pretty unrealistic to expect that any foreign buyer would... It's not true, really, but it's because it's, it's function of what the movie is, and also like, even though it might be first time director, but if, depending again, if the script was, the question is, the script is a genre based yeah. or not. If they wrote a script that was some sort of a genre based and had somebody attached, that means that a certain actor or an actress that had value and value in this business works on, you know, I, I don't know how to explain, but certain actors have more value or less value in worldwide based on the box office and based on how the movies are performed. So if you attach certain actors, you know, that can help you raise the money or sell the movie or pre-sell your movies internationally and that's how the movie is getting made. So, for example, if I go and make Looper and I say script with Ryan, with Bruce Willis, Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Emily Blunt, I can figure out that there is a certain value for pre-selling that movie, whether pre-selling or not. So, you know, it's like, it gives a certain comfort level to the financiers. You say, you know what, if you make the movie for X, then you're gonna, you know you're gonna be covered, you know, by the foreign sales, by this number. So, if a first time director here were able to attach a certain actor, that could they, help. Uh, there's no reason he couldn't, you know, pre-sell, depending on who the actor, depending on how much money they were trying to sell the movie for. Did you cover the other financing on Looper? I thought it was a surely no. No, we we basically Looper was, I would say, ninety percent covered by pre, by foreign pre-sales. Right. You know. But that's an unusual. And the risk. It's unusual. Unusual because it's not unusual, but it's unusual for um, it's unusual. For you guys, but it's not unusual on big on studio. Certain, yeah. Again, it's a it's a great people really love the script, which is a genre. You can still sell it as a genre movie. People love drawing, and people love the cast. You have know, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who's really hot, and you have Emily and Bruce Willis, who definitely has huge value in that 
genre, so you can see how you can sell it. But if I was going to try to make a movie at $50 million, then that's going to be much harder for me. Yeah. What made it really attractive is that we didn't make it relatively for a lot of money. Did, so, did you guys consider going out to just studios for yeah. overall? No. It's not even. I mean, the business, you know, for the, you know, for certain movies, the business of making movies, not developing movies. Yeah. So the idea is, here's the script, let's build a cast, and let's go make the movie. Now, plus, for people who have seen the movie, we knew there's no way that the studio would let you presumably shoot a kid. There's just no way they would ever make a movie. Uh, or, I don't know how they would be about the ending of the movie. So it wasn't, you know, we didn't want to waste time. We said, let's get the cast. We got the cast. A week later, I was at, you know, I was at Cannes Film Market, and literally in like three days, we sold that the entire world in this one territory. So the movie was fine. The whole, the whole thing, literally, took like two weeks, and the movie was fine.